This is going to be a general eclipse reading if it's meant for you. It's meant for you. Well, we have a new moon solar eclipse happening on Saturday, October 14th. And wow, this is going to be an incredible day, an incredible time. This is called the Ring of Fire. And it's special because we will not have another annular solar eclipse until the year 2039. So there's so much to think about in regards to this eclipse because what do eclipses do? They disrupt, they bring about change. They bring this sudden clarity. Um, this is a time of self-discovery and new beginnings. So it's okay to set some intentions right now to say, what do I want? Because here's the thing. I think a lot of people thought they knew what they want, but it may not exactly be the way they thought it was going to be, right? Have you ever been in that position where, for example, you had this plan in your mind, you set it all out, you imagined it, and then all of a sudden you got it, or you got close to it, or something shifted in your life and you went, yeah, I don't know. You know, it just didn't feel the way you thought it would. And that's because the universe often has other plans for us, right? So, you know, this is going to be the first of two eclipses in the month. But the Ring of Fire, October 14th, is, you know, really going to make us feel a roller coaster of emotions. So there's a lot of anxiety. There can even be some anger coming up with the Mars placements at this time. And this is going to be where you kind of confront you know, where you've been, <laughs> where you're at, and maybe a different view of the future, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take three cards to start off and just get a general message for the overall themes. Let's see what we need to know about this eclipse. Okay, transformation. You cannot even make this up. A fresh new way of living emerges. Wow, the phoenix, that's that Scorpio energy that says total transformation and new beginnings. Okay, let's take a look at another oracle card here for some overall information. And we have time for a nap. So interesting because I find this card has been coming out quite a bit. I almost feel like the vibe is to rest before that shocking energy comes in. You know, I know that sounds like, you know, really extreme, but you know what I mean when you say calm before the storm or your body needs to rest in order to handle all the energies that are coming in, right? We want to feel like we're, we're calibrated. I feel like that's the word I'm looking for, to calibrate, even to recalibrate. So let's see what else. Okay, see, what do you need to release? I know that that card's been coming out a lot too in this deck. So I'm seeing a lot of repetitive messages uh, throughout the week. So let's take a look. Um, because this eclipse is called the Ring of Fire, I wanted to use these coffee cup oracle cards because they are, you know, a circle. <laughs> and let's kind of see what's at the center of this eclipse energy. I thought I was going to take that card and I'm not. Okay, I'll take this one. Groom. Very interesting. Husband or marriage? Wow. Um, that could very well indicate some sort of union. Now... This isn't about gender, but it seems to me that it's about masculine energy. And what's the definition of masculine energy? It's about forward motion, right? It's divine masculine energy taking the lead. Wow, I really like that. Okay, let's do something a little bit different than I thought I was going to do. I'm going to be spontaneous here, and I'm going to get some energies for around this. The crown, wow, success and pride. And I'm also thinking crown chakra downloads new information. Okay, lion, Leo energy, strength and success. Wow, this, uh, this time is going to be very important to us. And the cat, you know, interesting, jealousy and gossip. Be very careful right now about the energy you have and what you share with people, friends, family. People like to see you do well, but they don't like to see you do better. And I think that's why when you have success and you have, you know, strength, people really want to pull on you for that. Now, interesting, we have success here twice. So there's something about success that's very important to this reading. And the dove. Wow. Peace and serenity. Hmm. That's definitely um, a synchronicity for me on a personal level because I recently asked for a sign and... Uh, there it is. Very interesting. You know, if you're finding that you need some confirmation, 
ask for your signs. Now, don't ask for the most random thing. Like I always say, don't ask for a white van. You know, if I see a white van, this means whatever, because there's a million white vans. Pick something that is so random that nobody would ever know, okay? And don't share it with anybody. Just keep it to yourself and see what happens. Now there's the eye, and this is all about envy and protection. And isn't this so interesting that it came under the cat card? Because this is what I mean, you know, there could be people who are watching you who, like I said, they wanna see you do well, but that doesn't mean they wanna see you do better, right? And I always think back to my childhood. My mother was a teacher for 46 years, and this is also how I became a teacher. I was a high school teacher for, for 19 years. And, you know, my mother used to always stress the importance of word choice. And I always think of jealousy and envy. And jealousy is when you hate someone for what they have, okay? And I often hear people say, oh, I'm so jealous. I'm so jealous of that house, jealous of that vacation, jealous of that car, that ring. I don't like that word. No offense if you use it, but think about the context. You know, jealousy really is like, I hate you for what you have. And envy is I would like to have what you have. You know, that's like saying, oh my goodness, I love your new car. Take me for a spin. I'm so envious. You know, there's a real difference. And so when I see a card here that says protection and envy, it really depends, of course, on the context. But I look at it as I would rather use the word envy than jealousy. So the eye can be in regards to the evil eye, as in wearing evil eye protection jewelry, you know, a ring or a necklace or a bracelet that deflects negative energy. Um, but essentially, it just means protect yourself, protect your energy, as I was saying earlier, okay? And um, let me just move these cards up here because I feel like I need, I feel like I need all this room. We got some deep stuff to talk about today. So, all right, let me add here. We have the pearl, hidden gem. I shouldn't have read that together. I think they're two separate words, but it just looks like it goes together. Hidden and gem. So in other words, there could be something that's hidden that comes to light that's a total blessing. Or in general, it's just you're a gem. There's something about your energy right now where you're going to find a true gem in what you're doing. Okay, let's see what else we need to know. And we have heart. Wow. Love and new love. Interesting. I love these cards. And the moose. Acceptance. Eccentricity. Wow. Okay. I think we're going to get into the depths of this reading um, with some really important messages. I decided to pull out the Wild Unknown Tarot because, A, this was actually the very first tarot deck that I ever bought. I was so in love with the artwork by Kim Kranz, the author. Um, I just absolutely love, love, love this deck, but I don't always use it. I use it on special occasions, you know, more in a private setting for myself. And today I felt the urge to pull it out for the Eclipse energy because, I mean, the title is The Wild Unknown, right? Eclipses are so wild and they bring up the unknown. So let's take a look back at the center of this reading and we have the groom and I mean, husband, marriage, divine masculine, forward energy. Let's see what else we need to know here. So, so interesting because this is the six of swords and the six of swords is peace. It's moving on to calmer waters. It could even be a card of travel. And I'm so pleased to see this because I mean, look at the rainbow. I think that the divine masculine energy has been through the ringer. Now, please don't misunderstand me. Of course, the feminine is, is in a time of up and down too. But I would just say that the divine masculine has really had to find themselves. And I love seeing that there is peace in that masculine energy. Okay, let's go back to the crown here and see what that success or that pride is all about. Yeah, judgment. Wow. This is a decision being made. This is uh, an announcement. Could even be like a sudden shocking announcement. This basically says a wake-up call. And of course, what does an eclipse do? It brings a wake-up call. And that strength and success. Well, there's the two of wands. Two of wands is asking you to make a decision. And you know what I always say. I always ask you, do you want to be in the old or do you want to be in the new? And I know you want to be in the new. I don't even know why I asked the question. However, I want you to reflect on it. Every time I say it, I want you to say to yourself, 
Do I really want to be in my comfort zone that's not so comfortable? Do I really want to be in the same old, same old? I truly don't believe that you want to be there. I think you want new energy. I think there's just always that fear that comes with it. And the two of wands is basically saying to you, make a decision, okay? Um, it also tells you to leave your comfort zone, as we know, which is part of this eclipse vibe, right? A shakeup. And also, it could indicate getting away or some travel. Now, the cat energy, um, we have the six of cups. And I love this card because as above, so below. I mean, when you look at that tree and then you look at the roots of the tree, it's basically a mirror, right? So here's the thing. The six of cups is a card of nostalgia and thinking about the past. And I think in your past, there may have been some jealousy. Funny how I just talked about jealousy and envy and look at the two words. I didn't even realize that jealousy. I did, but I didn't. You know, I went all into jealousy and envy with this card. And I talked about the, the protection here and the gossip and being careful about sharing your energy. But I mean, there are no accidents. Look at that. I had to tell you that for a reason. I think in the past, um, you've dealt with that. You've dealt with people who weren't truly on your side. You know, they may have been your friend, but not always wanting to see you succeed, right? So Six of Cups is about nostalgia. It is about inner childhood wounds. So this is basically saying we need to let that go, right? I always say you can visit the past. You can't live there. And let's take a look here at the Dove. And we have the Ten of Swords. Ten of Swords means something is dead, done, and over with. That means an ending, right? And the Dove is all about peace. Um, and I believe that the card says uh, serenity. And so that's what we want. We want to finally have our peace. And that's really nice because new beginnings bring the unknown. Now here we go. The Eight of Swords. Under that I card, we have envy and protection. Stop overthinking everything. Don't bring attention to your weaknesses and don't bring attention to the things that you don't want because what you resist persists or what or what you put your energy into you know manifests or where you put your energy manifests right and let's look at that pearl or that hidden gem and we have eight of cups walking away from things that no longer serve you i'm always reminded of an old chinese proverb that i reference and that is good luck is bad luck and bad luck is good luck and remember at the beginning of this reading i talked about the fact that this eclipse is bringing up these feelings of maybe I didn't really see things clearly. Maybe I thought I wanted this, but that's not really what I want. And there's a hidden gem here in some sort of situation where you thought it was going to be so amazing and maybe it just didn't fit who you are and where you want to be. So Eight of Cups is walking away from things that no longer serve you. And so... Let's see what else we need to know here. We'll go to the heart card. And we have here Mother of Pentacles. So in this deck, that is the Queen of Pentacles. And that is about stability. And that's what you're looking for. In your heart, you want stability, right? The Queen of Pentacles is someone who loves her family and home. She likes nice things, but she's also generous. There's a real balance to her life. And this Moose card, we've got the Daughter of Swords. You know, the Moose is being calm, cool, collected, and... Daughter of Swords or Page of Swords is considered a bit of spying or observing, you know? I want you to observe more than you speak. I want to I want to see what comes in. I want you to lean back and sort of observe others and see what they bring to the table. You don't always have to be in the masculine energy, pushing everything, overgiving, overdoing. You don't have to be everything to everyone. I would give you the advice to let people sort of come to you in this case. All right, so let's get some other oracle cards here to clarify. Let's go back to the center of your reading. And we talked about that masculine energy, that groom card, having some peace. And there's, wow, the universe is like I said what I said. There's the man. There's the masculine energy. Okay, let's go back to the crown here and judgment. I really feel like there are downloads coming in through the crown chakra. Okay, and there's the lion. Beautiful. This is about being heart-centered, and we did have the heart card um, down below here. Majestic, self-esteem, pride, overcoming difficulties, fair and just, devoted, heart-centered. I love that. Okay, beautiful. Let's go to this two of wands here. What do we need to know? 
Now we've got the elephant and the elephant, again, obstacles removed. We're getting over these barriers, you know, we're overcoming these difficulties and there's a very powerful energy in the air. You might even be having some very strong dreams. This card does say lucid dreams, um, but know that you're supported, okay? Um, get out of your comfort zone. Everything will be okay. Now that six of cups, we talked about that jealousy or that cat energy, right? Living in the past, we can visit it, we can't live there. And look at this card as saying, release the baggage. Let it go. Let go of the burdens, the shame, the regret. And let's take a look here at this Ten of Swords, the High Priestess, the Moon. Do you know what's interesting about the Moon, or even the High Priestess for that matter, is that when we think of the Crown Chakra, or the High Priestess who's the Queen of the Ethereal Realm, understand that the sky is limitless. The possibilities are endless. And so it means that if you were to let go of this old cycle over here, anything is possible. As long as you're open, you know, always ask for what you want or better. And that's a fear, you know, in regards to relationships, just as a quick example, you know, I talk to people and I say, are you truly open? And they say, yes, Kelly. Yes. If somebody else came along, sure. I'd go on that date. I'd be open. And I always say, really, are you sure about that? Because we always try to recreate the person who has sparked us right? We think we're open. <laughs> we imagine ourselves to be open. I call that perceived openness in my 1010 scale. Or if you've seen my 1010 scale video, um, go have a look because I, I say that that's a perception of being open. And, you know, I always ask, do you want a person who can't lead, who can't make decisions, who placates to family, who possibly lies, who can't make boundaries in other relationships, if that's a third party situation or family dynamic, whatever it is, do you really want that? Because if you're telling me that that's what you want, you know, you're setting your standards actually quite low. You need to ask for what you want or better because realistically, it's okay to want that person, but you want them at their best. You don't want them in their weakest moments. You want them to be able to bring their best to you, just like you need to bring your best to them. If you want them to come correct, you have to come correct. Your possibilities have to be endless and so do theirs, right? So when you're asking for something, ask for what you want or better. Okay, so let's take a look at the Eight of Swords here, this overthinking um, Milky Way. This is what networking and social media, you might be over, overthinking something on social media posts, stories, please don't make posts to try and get the attention of another person. And the reason I say that is, well, I have experience doing that and I can assure you that it's a short-term gain. I always ask people, do you want, you know, short-term gain, long-term pain, short-term pain, long-term gain. If you're overthinking something, you know, and even like you're envious of something that you see on social media, don't post thinking that you're fooling the universe. You cannot fool the universe. Your true intentions are known. Even if maybe the everyday person on your social media doesn't know that, the universe knows that. And you've got to be very careful what energy you're putting out. Okay? So let's go to this Eight of Cups, this walking away from things that no longer serve you. And, you know, here's the thing. The emotions are running high. Of course they are during eclipse season. <laughs> it's, 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 it's a given. Okay, meaning you're going to feel the instability, you're going to be riding the wave one day and the next day you're going to fall, but you're going to get right back up and keep on going. We don't ever give up. If we got to make it or break it, we're always going to make it. And, you know, you're going to be diving pretty deep into some new experiences. And I know it's a little bit daunting, but honestly, it's the best thing for you. Okay, embrace it. Now that mother of pentacles in the heart card, you know what's interesting is if you want that new love to come in, okay, if you want that stability to come in, you've got to let go of something else. And when I think back to this card at the very beginning, what do you need to release? Well, ask yourself, what is it you need to release? I'm really curious. Take a second and think about that. What needs to go? What's not working for you? Because I feel like I'm having this conversation with a lot of people lately where I say, listen, what worked for you for X amount of years doesn't mean that it will always be that way. My dad used to always say, you can only go to the bank so many times. And I think when we go through these tower moments, 
we either listen and recognize that we can't keep doing the same old, same old, or unfortunately, we keep on going with our blinders on and wondering why is this happening? You know, why is this happening to me? And it's not about happening to you, it's happening for you. But again, everybody's on a different timeline and we're meant to recognize these things at different times. But if you're seeing something happen repeatedly, you have to look at the common denominator and the common denominator is always ourselves. So we have to put to rest or put to bed some of these old things that just don't serve us anymore. You know, I, I guarantee you, if you ask somebody, tell me why you are the way you are. Somebody will tell you going back 20 years, all the good, bad and ugly, right? But ask yourself, are you really that person anymore? I'm not the same person I was a year ago, five years ago, 10 years ago, 20 years ago, when I was a child, not at all. And I don't think any of you are either. So why do we keep telling ourselves those stories? It's our comfort zone, right? It makes us feel like we're justifying something, but we don't have to prove ourselves. That's the thing. And I find that when I talk to people, and this is just from my teaching experience and also from my, my counseling and tarot experience, that a lot of people are misunderstood, especially as children or teenagers. And it's so much easier to live up to that expectation than it is to actually be your authentic self. So I ask you the question, what do you need to release? What about that old story needs to go? How have you been misjudged? How have you been misunderstood? Why does it still matter to you? Where is this repeating in your relationships? So all important deep thoughts for this eclipse for sure. Um, and let's go look at this Daughter of Swords, this Page of Swords, this sort of spying or observing. Um, yeah, communication. What did I say earlier? I said, let people come to you. Let them communicate. Listen more than you speak. You'll learn so much. <laughs> You'll learn about people so much. And I think this is the difficulty. And I, and I think I said it recently in another reading. You know, as a, I was a French teacher by trade, English teacher as well, but, but French for many years. And I used to always think about the two verbs to listen and to hear. And you know how parents or teachers will say, I know you hear me, but are you listening? You know, you can physically hear, but are you listening to the message? So many people don't listen. Okay. People can tell you things and you just hear whatever you want to hear. <laughs> right? So it's selective hearing or listening, whichever verb you want to use. But essentially, you know, you've got to, you've got to really ask yourself, do I listen? Do I have good listening skills? So let's take a look at some power of surrender cards just to see what we need to surrender or surrender to in regards to this eclipse. And surrender your addictions. Whether you're addicted to substances, food, people, sex, or overworking, take action to begin to heal the addiction and replace it with healthier alternatives. Okay. The Virgo in me likes to keep my cards aligned. <laughs> Let's see what else we need to know here. What do we need to surrender or surrender to? Surrender low self-esteem. You deserve success, love, and abundance. Set an intention to identify and release any remnants of low self-esteem. Okay. And I'm going to take a third one just for kicks. Mm -hmm. Of course, I knew it. Surrender to miracles. What did I say at the beginning? Anything is possible. Be open to miracles occurring in your life. Feel and know that these events are real. Let go of any resistance and banish any doubt that miracles can happen. I love that. I really thank you for listening to my reading. Um, I'm wishing you the most amazing eclipse. This is a time of big changes. And I'm so excited for you. I can't wait to see where we head. Thank you again for your kindness and support. If you'd like a personal reading from me, my website is in my bio. I wish you an amazing eclipse.